Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to the next episode of Rare Plant Index. You may have seen already from the title, but this week's episode is on Calathea. Now, a quick couple of notes before we start. A few of you may or may not be aware that Calathea are just one kind of genus of plant that fall under the bracket of Marantaceae. Other members of this family include Maranta, Stromanthi, Tenanthi, all of that kind of thing. So just to avoid any confusion, I'm not going to cover those other subtypes I've just mentioned because I want to focus purely on Calathea. So if you're expecting certain plants in this list and they aren't, that might be why. For example, this picture here beside me is a picture of what is usually known as a Calathea Burley Marks. However, it is in fact a Tenanthi. Burley Marks. If you see what I'm saying, it's not a Calathea. Similarly, more of a well-known one is the Stromanthi Trio Star, which we know to be a Calathea Trio Star, except technically it's kind of not. So I just wanted to clear that up really, really quickly in case you guys were expecting plants like the ones behind me in the video. They won't be in this video. And it wouldn't be a rare plant index if it wasn't extremely difficult to identify half of these plants. I have gone on Google looking for a variety of different Calathea, and honestly, some of the Calathea that you Google you search for them and about six different types of Calathea actually pop up under the same name. So what I think is happening is a lot of these Calathea are getting, you know, mislabeled. So it's actually very, very difficult to identify the Calathea that I'm talking about. So if I've got any wrong, please let me know in the comments, just timestamp it and let me know. For example, if you Google a Calathea picturata, I think it is, like six different types of Calathea come up on Google Images and it's like, well, what do I do with that information? I don't know. I don't know which one the right one is. A few people do tell me from the comments that it is quite useful to grab a notepad and pen. And if you haven't already, grab a snack, grab a hot drink and let's go. So shall we start with uncommon as per usual? So the first plant in common, we have the Calathea lancifolia, also known as the rattlesnake plant. Now, please remember that for later, okay? It's usually known by this name because of the pattern on its leaves, obviously reminds people of a rattlesnake's tail. I used to want one of these actually, but I never ended up picking one up. It's very nice though, it's got a really nice corrugated effect and the leaves are quite long and land-shaped, so that's quite nice. Moving swiftly on to the Calathea Louisiae Maui Queen. This one, honestly, this one doesn't look very special. I wanted to include it just in case you want something much, much more minimal and pattern foliage isn't really for you, but maybe you might want to try and look after a Calathea I don't know. I don't want to say it's boring, but you know, there's a lot of nicer Calathea out there for me, but it's still nice, you know. Next up in Uncommon, I have the Calathea Sabrina. Now this one is very, very nice. To me, the leaves look like the veining on the leaves, the brighter patterns that you can see in the picture. They, they kind of look neon in most pictures that I Googled. I couldn't really find many pictures where they didn't look like, you know, really, really bright and vibrant. So that's really, really nice. I'm pretty sure the leaves are velvet as well, which is a lovely touch. I love velvet leaves on pretty much anything. Next Next on the list for in common, we have the Calathea Macoyana, if that's how you say it. Again, this one was on my list as well. It's really, really pretty. I nearly picked up one of these a while back. I think it was last summer when I was in London, but I didn't. I showed some self-restraint. Go me. And I didn't pick one up. The leaves are also quite glossy, which I find quite nice. Moving on. Next on the list, we have the Calathea Crocata. I think that's what it's called. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's up on the screen. So this Calathea is usually bought for its flowers, which is kind of weird to me because Calathea aren't usually bought for their flowers, they, they're bought for their foliage. But as you can see from the image, the foliage on this one isn't that special, I wouldn't say. So apparently people buy this for the flowers. It's got really pretty orange kind of, I don't know, I don't know how you'd describe them. They're nice. Um, I wouldn't go for one personally. It's just not to my taste anymore. My tastes have changed quite considerably, so I probably wouldn't go for it. The next plant on Uncommon is the Calathea Lepidina. When I first saw this Calathea, I actually thought it was sun damaged because the, the green color of this Calathea is actually really, really like light colored. Like it's not even as dark as this fern. It's way, way lighter. It doesn't really do much for me because I like a really ornate pattern on my Calathea, mainly. Next up on Uncommon, we have the Calathea Albertii or the Calathea Misto. I think they're the same thing. So you will see on the image beside me that this looks quite familiar to you if you watch my videos. So this is not a Calathea Velvet Touch, but I appreciate it looks very, very similar. The main differences between this and the Velvet Touch from what I can see is that the leaves 100% on this one are not velvet. They're clearly very glossy. The pattern is kind of similar, but it's not the same plant. So if you think you've got a Velvet Touch, but it doesn't feel very velvety, 
it's probably a calathea misto so please keep an eye out for that as i say it's nice but i mean i have a velvet touch so i wouldn't i wouldn't go for this next on the uncommon list is the calathea cynthia i didn't actually find much about this which might suggest it's actually should probably be bumped up a few categories and put into rare but it looks kind of nice it reminds me of is it Rosio? Rosio Picta? I'm not sure. It reminds me of another Calathea. It's very, very similar pattern on the leaves. If you know what I'm thinking of, please comment below because I can't think of what I'm thinking of. But it's okay. Again, I probably wouldn't pick it up. And moving on to the rare category. First up in the rare category, we have the Calathea ornata or the Calathea pinstripe. They're pretty much the same plant. The color of the foliage and the leaf is like extremely dark. It's green, but it's a super, super dark green. And it has like pink, pink lines up the leaf. The lines look hand painted, like you cannot tell that they are part of the plant. They just look hand painted. It's really spectacular. I want you to take note of the pattern that you see on the leaves because there are a few plants throughout this list that are a little bit similar to that, but they are different to this plant. They're not the same plant. Next on the list for rare is the Calathea Beauty Star. Now then, this looks, this is why I mentioned the Ornata before. This looks quite similar to the Ornata in the pattern. I think the main difference here is I can see the same pink streaks that an Ornata has, only this one has like a bleached kind of water color variegation to accompany that and the leaves don't look anywhere near as dark as the previous image. I wouldn't have it based on the fact that I have one a little bit more ornate, should we say, than this. Right, the next one on rare is one of my favorites, the Calathea Orbifolia. Now, I wanted to include this specific picture because that's actually the picture that made me find out about Orbifolia and actually want to buy one because they're just so gorgeous. The leaves are like, they're not almondy shaped, they're like really big round leaves and they have like a silver candy cane kind of vibe going on. They're so pretty, honestly. They, they don't have a purple on the side, they're all green. It is my fussiest Calathea that I own, hands down. The next plant on the rare list is the Calathea Velvet Touch, but its real name is, and let me try this, Was Wixie Eye? Was Wix, Was? So Wixie, I don't, I still can't do it. I'm sorry. If someone knows how to phonetically pronounce this, please place it below because I really want to learn how to pronounce the name of my own plant. If anyone actually owns one of these, you will probably agree with me that you cannot touch one of these plants and not buy one because that's certainly how it was for me when I first saw one of these. I saw one and then I kept, I think I touched it in a local plant store and I thought about it for about a week. And then as soon as I found out that they had more in, I went and bought one. Next on the rare list is the Calathea Flame Star. Again, this used to be on my list. This was massively on my list, actually, because I feel like for a Calathea, it has the most intricate pattern on it. I don't know of a Calathea with a more intricate pattern than this one. Correct me if you think I'm wrong on that. Okay, so next up, we have the Calathea Rosio Picta Corona. Uh, this is just basically a spin on the Calathea Rosio Picta, but I saw it on Google and I thought, you know what, I'll include it because it's pretty cool. It's got really dark edging around the leaves. And I guess if you're a massive fan of the Rosio Picta, then you could maybe consider getting this if you think, oh, okay, I like the style of the leaf. It's just cool to have a different, you know, color variation. This one could definitely be for you. I don't think, I'm looking at a, an image now where the, the dark parts on the edges of the leaf look almost black. I'm pretty sure it's not black. I'm pretty sure it's just a dark green. So I'm gonna tell you it's dark green and hopefully I've found you a better image, but it, it kind of looks black on my image here. So <laughs> next on the rare list, we have the Calathea Compact Star. Again, I've seen these in person. They're very, very nice. They remind me quite a bit of the Calathea, it's not Calathea, the Tenanthi Burley Marks. Now I used to have one of these, I've just very recently sold mine off. The, the leaves to me are quite similar in terms of the pattern. It's a little bit less fishbony. I think as opposed to the more fishbony pattern, this one appears more like, I don't want to say a feather pattern, but it reminds me more of a feather than a fishbone. First up in very rare, again, not flexing, is the Calathea White Star, also known as the Calathea Majestica, I think. Again, it's this plant right here. It's super beautiful beautiful. It has, well, you can probably see, it has uh, white veining, but, and I, I don't know what affects this, but occasionally the white parts of the leaf can get like a blush of pink. It almost looks like someone literally took some blusher and dusted it down the leaf. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know what governs that pink color. 
at all, um, but it's so gorgeous. A lot of people ask me about this plant in videos. I'm constantly responding to comments, you know, what is that plant behind you? It's a Calathea white star. Try and get your hands on one. I've put it in very rare just because everyone asks me about it and no one appears to know where to get one. Maybe it's not, maybe it is more common. I'm not really sure. Next on very rare, we have the Calathea elliptica vitata. Vitata. Calathea elliptica vitata. Now you will see this is incredibly close, incredibly close to the white star. However, it's totally not. I know you're thinking, oh my God, it's, it is, it's not. I've, uh, I've triple checked. This one is just, the variegation is just not as white from what I can see. Next on the list is a plant that I think is quite highly sought after, and that is the Calathea Network, also known as the Calathea Mu Musaica. Musaica? So I always tell people when I see this plant that it, the leaves to me, I don't know if anyone's gonna agree with me here, but the leaves to me look like someone was on the phone and they had a notepad in front of them and they started doodling. I don't know why, but every time I see this plant, I feel like someone has literally just sat there and made a massive doodle on like a two hour phone call. I, th I think it's quite cool. If I saw this, if I had more room, yeah, I might pick it up. It was on my list very recently, actually. Next on the list is another one that seems highly sought after by a lot of people, and that is the Calathea White Fusion. Now, this one is very beautiful. This is possibly the most beautiful looking Calathea out of all of them. It has green and white variegation on it, but the leaves are, they can get very, like, irregular shaped. They can almost look frilly sometimes, um, depending on, you know, the variegation, the size of the leaf and all of that. They are really, really pretty. A lot of people say that they're absolutely divas to look after though. I hear nothing but people having problems with them. If you want one of these, let me know. Is it easy? Is it difficult? Is it the same as any of the Calathea? Let me know. Next on the list is a Calathea that I've honestly, I haven't seen this one before and that's a lot for me because I, I feel like I know my Calathea quite well and that is the Calathea Bella. Again, this one reminds me of the Tenanthi Burley Marks but it's not. It is definitely, definitely different. Um, you can kind of see by the pattern on the leaves and the shape of the leaves that it's definitely different. Shape of the leaves are more closer to the Magic Star I think. Yeah, I had no idea this even existed. Like, no idea whatsoever. So that's very, very pretty. The Calathea Bella. Let me know if you own this, have seen this, knew about it. I don't know, because I didn't. That was definitely a new one for me. Pushing on into the extremely rare category. This one, this one's cool. This one's cool. So we have the Calathea Fasciata or the Calathea Rotundifolia. And I think I want to say they're the same plant, but I did Google hits for both of these and honestly, Fasciata returned more of this image than Rotundifolia, so I don't know if it's mislabeled, it could be. I'm just going to run for now with Calathea Fasciata. Jesus, these names are hard to say. So you will notice immediately, this is extremely similar to the Calathea Orbifolia. The only difference is instead of silver veining uh, on the leaves and the candy caneness, the silver is replaced with a dark green candy cane and it's very nice. I've seen versions of this where the dark parts are super, super dark, although that could be photo editing, but they look very nice. I would actually probably pick one of these up Gonna be honest, even though I'm full up, this is probably a Calathea I'd make an exception for because I never see these. I don't know about you guys, but I never see them. Next on the list for extremely rare, we have the Calathea Pavonii. So I only found one image for this on Google, but that makes sense. We're in extremely rare now and it, it looks nothing amazingly special, but it's more the fact I haven't even seen it before. If you think this is not actually what I'm saying it is, then please, as usual, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I, I don't have too much to say about this other than the patterns down the front of the leaves kind of remind me of, I think it's some species of moth or butterfly, just the way that the pattern is. Is. It, I don't know why, it just reminds me of that. Next up on Extremely Rare, we have the Calathea Silver Plate slash White Jade. This was another one where I Googled the plant and honestly, if you Google Calathea Silver Plate and you Google Calathea White Jade, you get pretty much, I think, the same plant. So I don't know what to do with that information, but this is what the plant looks like. For now, I'm gonna assume these are both the same plant. If you know otherwise, likewise, tell me. It's it's cool. I guess it gets its name because it's mainly silver slash white. It's very, very pretty. It has some nice flowers on the image I'm looking at. Would I buy this one? No, probably not. It's a little bit too plain for me, although it is very unique and it's cool because the leaves are all silver. I do like my patterns on my Calathea, so I would probably give this one a miss. However, I hadn't heard of this one. This one was definitely new to me, so last one on the extremely rare list is the Calathea lutea. Lutea, Lutea, Lutea. I don't know, but this Calathea kind of blew my mind a little bit because honestly, to me, 
This doesn't look like a calathea. It looks a lot, a lot like a banana tree. Uh, again, if you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. But I kind of can't believe that's a calathea. It has no redeeming features of a calathea at all. It doesn't. It just looks so much like a banana tree. I almost think I'm being duped here, but apparently it is. A lot of the images I think I saw of this, I can't remember if it was this one or another one, but the calathea leaves on this and a lot of images I saw, they were quite silvery looking. They were less green. I don't know how true that is. And last but not least, guys, this one's good because we have a holy category and I've put this plant in this holy category because everything we thought we knew so earlier, the first plant I mentioned was the Calathea lancifolia, which is known as the rattlesnake plant. And if you remember, I told you, you know, remember that fact. Because in it holy, we have the Calathea crota, crotalifera. I don't know. But the point is, this is known as the rattlesnake plant, as in like the actual rattlesnake plant, not the lancifolia. I, my mind was blown as well, I know. I, just like all of you guys, thought that the Calathea lancifolia was the rattlesnake plant. Guess what? Fake news. It's not. It's not. This is. I might cycle through two images because one image here I'm looking at the blooms and one image I'm looking at the leaves. So I might show you both. The leaves from what I can see are very similar to the previous one, the lutea, but the blooms, look like a rattlesnake's tail. And that is why they call this plant the rattlesnake calathea. The real one, I know, mind blown. I didn't know any of this. To me, the leaves on this one remind me a little bit more of a bird of paradise, if you have one of those or you've seen one of those. It is rare, I don't know if it's like, oh my God, ridiculously rare, but I wanted to put it in this category because I feel like everything I knew about the rattlesnake plant has just been changed. So I wanna know what you guys think on that or if you knew about this, maybe I'm like late to the party, I don't know. So that brings us to the end of our list, guys. I am extremely, extremely sorry that I could not feature more plants in this. I feel like with other types of plants, this will be easier but I don't know if it was just for me because I've seen a lot of calathea out there. I, it kind of clouded my judgment a little bit. Not only that, but when I was Googling them, there was like 10 different hits for the same named plant and some of them were obviously wrong. And I guess there just doesn't seem to be many rare calathea because they seem quite common generally. Like a lot of us have them in our homes. It's a common thing. They're quite in fashion. So if you know of any calathea that you think are super, super rare that I have not mentioned, then please do let me know. I would genuinely be quite interested to see what you guys have or know of that I did not find. It's probably worth mentioning that I did find a huge list on Google of rare slash endangered calathea, like literally like a list 30 plants long. However, none of those plants had associated images. So therefore I didn't want to mention them because I can't show you the plant. There was no point. So thank you very, very much for your time. Please do leave suggestions below on what rare plant index you would like to see next. Personally, if it were up to me, I may try Monstera. But of course, if you have any other ideas that you prefer, I did. I will literally take the most popular suggestion in the comments and I will do that. So that's absolutely fine. Feel free to suggest that either on here, Instagram, wherever you want. So thank you very, very much for watching this video. If you like this video, then please leave a like. It really, really helps. If you'd like to see any more of these videos or just any of my other videos in general, then please hit subscribe. It really, really helps. So thank you very, very much guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.